Good evening, my name is Garrett and welcome to The Last Call. Tonight's final drink is from Barrel Craft Spirits. This is Vantage, coming in at a 57.94% ABV, no wage statement. So, Barrel Craft Spirits, if you've never heard of them, they're, uh, they're around pretty good. You can find a lot of different offerings that they do. And they like to source things, blend together, and really come up with unique profiles. Vantage here sources straight bourbon whiskey from Indiana, Tennessee, and Kentucky, and ages those into Mizanara, which is Japanese oak, French oak, and American oak casks. So I'm really interested in that blending process, and mainly because of the Mizanara. Mizanara is not a cheap oak to use, specifically in the cask form. Usually a lot of times they end up using staves of it because it is an expensive project. And so far, a lot of people reviewed this and said they really enjoyed it. So I've already had the Barrowcraft Spirits Armida, and I thought it was a really good bottle. I just wish the profiles kind of came together a little bit more. So I did criticize it a little bit on it, but I thought overall it's still a solid bottle. I'm really interested in this one because there's another one or two that I want to pick up that really catch my eye. But nonetheless, let's jump into things. As always, we're going to be trying it two different ways. First way, neat, no ice, no water. Second way, we'll add just a drop of water, see if anything changes up. And as always, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, hang around for a bit. I will link any other Barrel Craft Spirit reviews I've done up above and down below. Like I so said, to this point, I've done the Armida, and I liked it. Um, I've went back to it a few times, and I think that's where my my mindset's kind of shifted a bit on it. Because I go, yeah, it's good. But these tend to be a fairly high dollar whiskey. And they do keep it at cask strength, which is nice. But they usually ask for a pretty high penny for them. And you know what? If you bring it to the table, I'm always fine with that. Beautiful, almost, uh, it's a beautiful, almost uh, like a burnt orange color to it. That's gorgeous colored. But they have a vatted single malt that I'm really interested in. And their dovetail has always been on my list of things to check out as well. So nonetheless, let's go for notes. Ooh, that is interesting. It's sweet. You definitely get the toasted element in there. The toasted American oak is beautifully done. And for me, French oak tends to bring across a spiciness or a nuttiness. And Misenar tends to bring across the more softer wood notes like cedars and a little bit of different kind of spice to it as well. But you definitely get the toasted element. It brings out that uh, kind of a sweet oak layer too. Beautiful spice layer in there. I love that nose. That is, it's no ABV, nothing sharp on that. But the, the nuttiness is very light from the French oak. I'm trying to pick out each individual layer here. So starting with the toasted element, you get the toasted and the charriness from that. But it's a little sweet oak from it as well. At least from when I've had toasted barrels, they tend to come out a little sweeter on the nose. So you get the vanilla, caramel, things like that. Your next layer, the French oak, I'm getting that cinnamon and nutmeg and the nuttiness from that along in there with a bit of caramel and almost dessert-like from it. Uh, like a, a nice slice of uh, like a caramel drizzle on a cheesecake. And the Mizanara, that's probably going to be the hardest one to pick out on the nose for me. Because Mizanara is such a subtle note. And it might be the cinnamon I'm getting. Or the uh, light spiced wood note. That might be adding to that as well. But that is complex. This is really setting up to be a beautiful sip, I'm hoping. Because there's also a little bit of fruitiness in the background. Almost like a, a tropical. Almost, if you would have said it had some rum cask influence, I would have believed it too. That is nice. All right. Let's go for a taste. the toasted element dominated here because you're getting a sweet oaks and a bit of caramel, but the spiciness from that uh, French oak cask really present here. The soft sweetness I'm going to assume is the Mizanara. That is warming, beautiful on the taste. 
It's got a rich layer to it. It is almost dessert-like. Man, if that's not good. It's got a bit of the green going on in there too. Get those classic bourbon notes of vanilla, caramel, and things like that all work really well with it. But the complexity that those barrels are adding to this with the spiciness and the nuttiness of that French oak, that toasted element, I would almost say maybe it, it was in the toasted cask a little too long because I don't get as much mizanara as I was hoping because that is such a subtle flavor for me. I was really interested to see how well that played in there. And again, maybe that's bringing across that little bit of uh, sweetness that I'm getting or the fruit layers is coming from the mizanara. It's possible. Coats the palate really well. Nothing harsh, no ABV burn, no off notes. This is a significant better experience with their blending process, in my opinion, than Armida brought. I felt like Armida, I got all the flavors, but they didn't commingle as well. Here, everything plays together really well. And I like it. I love the oiliness to it, the spice layers, and I think that's the big kicker here, is all three casks are bringing a different layer of spice, but kind of like a curry, where all you have an amalgamation of all these different spices and flavors going on. They blend together in the end beautifully under the right eyes. This is really good. I love that toasted oak to it. I think that's the winner there. Even though I, I know I kind of criticized it because I wish that I could get a little bit more mizanar out of it. But I kind of expected the mizanar to be very well hidden in the background because it is such such a soft note. All right, let's add a little drop of water. See what changes up here. Under most circumstances, that water is probably going to break up the oils, make the palate maybe not cling as much, but we're looking to see if we can find any other different notes in the neat version or the water version, or if it's a situation that if you're new to whiskey, if you are, welcome, and it'll let you kind of acclimate to it before jumping up into the higher proof again. So let's go for notes. Ooh. Pear? It's the little fruit cups that have all the Melody fruits in there. The juice that they're in, that's what it reminds me of. My brain is going that direction. It is sweeter. It's got a little bit more of a metallic to it on the nose. And that tends to happen on some of these again because they're at a certain proof for a reason. Yes, they're cask strength, but it's because it works really well at cask strength. So there is a little bit of a metallic note in there. Get a little bit of spice still. The oak layers are showing up really well. Mm, man, oh, that is so, that is so complex of a nose. This, it's breaking up things already and I'm, I'm kind of worried on that. But nonetheless, Let's go for taste. Yep, it's okay. It breaks up a lot of the characteristics here. Uh, you're still getting a bit of the spiciness from things like the toasted oak and the French oak. The fruit layer does wake up quite a bit. And I will say that, especially on the nose and the taste, that fruit layer is like amalgamation of fruits in a fruit cup with the juice with it. It's not bad, actually but it's definitely nowhere near the neat version. The mouth feels okay on it. Uh, again, we broke up a lot of those oils, so they're not as clingy. The spice elements are still there. You're getting a little bit stronger vanilla as well. The oak, the caramels are still showing up too. Go back to the neat version here. Maple syrup? Like a um, craft maple syrup. Not like a store-bought, anybody kind of everyday brand, but a bit of sweetness of a maple syrup in there now. As always, it doesn't matter what you drink or how you drink it, as long as you enjoy it. That's gorgeous. This goes easier, but I almost feel like you lose out on a bit of it, though I do like that fruit layer in there. That fruit layer is really nice in there. All right, let's talk about market price, because we all know market price is market price and it's always gonna vary. I ended up paying 86 bucks for it. 
And honestly, that's kind of the cheapest I've seen it around my neck of the woods. Most places want 90 to it, upwards to $100 online. Some danced a little bit lower online, but not a lot. And to be honest, at mid 80s, I, I can't argue with it. It's a gorgeous bottle. This made me change my mindset on Barrel Craft Spirits. Honestly, it did. That is a beautiful blend. I'm definitely interested to try the single malt version uh, of the like five or six different Texas, like they bought all sorts of interesting distilleries, mainly because of Balconis is in there. So I'm really interested, but um, this rewrites my brain because I thought um, Armida again was okay. I liked it, but I just wish the flavors commingled better. Here, beautifully done. Easily worth the 86 bucks if you're looking for something in their region. Uh, if you pay, I would pay up to 90. I probably wouldn't pay over 90. Maybe I would. I don't know. That's such a unique blend. I love it. I really love that. The proof is perfect on it. I do wish we knew a little bit more on the ages of the bourbon that were put in there. I'll criticize it on that a little bit. But either way, 100%. If you get the option to try this one, do it. If you get the option to buy it and you can splurge to spend 80 some dollars on this, I, I really think it's worth it because that is a beautiful sip. So yeah, there you have it folks, Barrel Craft Spirits Vantage. If you have any questions about the bottle itself, let me know down in the comment section below. I will do my best to answer it. And if you have any specific spirit I should go looking for, also let me know down below. Love doing these reviews and sharing with you the experience at home. And as always, may your last drink of the night be the best one.